for people that feel that of like that, that hurdle of sharing my story. And even if I know people are essential to my healing journey, getting to that place of sharing my story outside of maybe those couple relationships is another step. So what do you say to someone about the value of sharing your story with others and overcoming that fear? Well, Nick, earlier in our conversation, we were talking about trying to control that self-perception. Yeah. And, and the fact is, it is exhausting. But it is also teaching people who has earned a right to my story. And, and, and you know, are, are they trustworthy? Are they going to be a vault? Or the other side of it for people like the three of us is that we've heard the Holy Spirit tell us that that our our uh, our testimony becomes a testimony of the gospel of Christ, and so we have become public with our testimonies, with our stories. But we have to help people to go from the shallow end to the deep end, and it begins with them discovering healthy boundaries about who has a right to my story, who doesn't have a right to my story. And, 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 and helping them to walk through the beliefs that they have in place that, that tell them, oh, you can't tell your wife this story. Because once you go back into a secret life, you're going to go back to your old coping strategies and you're ne- you're not going to get rid of the addictive lifestyle and you're going to go back to trying to survive instead of learning to thrive so there's there is a journey but the fact is that the three of us have known because we've all shared our testimony is i don't have to uh, you know i'm a simple guy i don't have to worry about whether people know my story or not because i've made it public that this is my story so i i'm i'm okay with engaging people when i have strangers approach me and and i was in an elevator once and someone said are you father flanagan and and, and i didn't know them it was it was it was, it was a, a a young woman asking me that and she says I've never seen your face, but I've heard you talk before. Mm. And I want to tell you how much I value your story. But I was okay with, with them knowing this. And here's the reason why. My, uh, my addictive story is certainly a significant part of my life, but it does not define me as a person. It's a part of my life. And so my telling the honest story of my life, including my addictive story, helps people to understand why I am who I am. And it gives them permission to begin to say, it may be okay for me to start telling about my weaknesses, my faults, my shortcomings, the sins in my life. Yeah. And I think that that's something that is very easy, like easily forgotten, because I'm guessing a high percentage, if not all people that are in the healing and recovery journey, heard someone's story. And that is part of what compelled them to then step into their own journey. It wasn't just, you know, it wasn't like, and I'm granted, this could probably happen. Someone's struggling with porn or betrayal trauma, and they go on Google and find pure desire and great. And they have tons of faith in it. They jump in and they get healed. That's amazing. I would guess that doesn't happen all that often. You have looked at reviews of stuff or heard people talk about it or listen to the podcast or whatever. Or someone you know. Totally. Yeah. Shares about it. Yeah. And so I think that you have to remember that for you, it probably started that way. And so you need to remember how powerful that experience was for you. And the language I've used, Terry, is just, I hold... My story in some ways can act as the key to someone else's story. Absolutely. It's, it's what yeah. opens the door for them. They have to do the journey, but I can act as the key for the front door. Yeah. Well, and that was completely my story. You know, it was Dr. Ted Roberts saying, if you don't share your story, how many men and women in your church who are struggling right now are going to keep struggling and hiding it and thinking that's what they're supposed to do? 
And it was compelling to see like my healing and my story had actually become in a healthy way, a part of the responsibility I had to care for others, to lead my family well. I mean, if, if I couldn't tell my story in other places, how could I tell my own children? I mean, you can't, you can't tell your kids and then say, no, don't tell anybody else. Like, you know, family secrets, is, that's not a great thing. So it's just realizing, wow, this is either going to become part of my story or I'm going to have to keep acting like it doesn't exist. And that's, that's again, moving us away from healing if we're trying to act like it wasn't there. And so uh, it doesn't mean, uh, to your point, Harry, and I think this is the fear that holds some people back, it doesn't mean everybody has earned the right to hear everything all the time. You know, if, if we think of sharing our story means pulling out my disclosure letter and reading a detailed accounting of everything I've ever done, it's like, well, no, you. there's maybe no one you should do that with outside of your spouse and group. It, it's, it's, it's in an appropriate way, sharing enough of the reality of what was happening that you're being vulnerable and you're inviting other people to have a similar experience. And we've done other podcasts on sharing your story, telling your story, you know, how to discern what I should share and what I shouldn't, how not to glorify the past, but glorify God, you know, all these great pointers. But, but I think if you just start there and go, okay, that doesn't mean everybody gets to hear all of it, but it means I need to be real about enough yeah. of it that others are invited in. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, and Nick, I would, add, I would add that because I think that's, that, that is we we should bold that statement but but uh, along the way it's there are some people who are still addicted to the protective personality they're still addicted to image management and now they act like they have their act together because they had their disclosure and they're not immediately acting out but the truth is we all still fall short of the glory of God. Yeah, amen. And we all still need, we're all still in the transition process. And it may not be about sexual addiction anymore, but there are other areas. And if you want to know mine, yeah. just ask Debbie. She'll be glad to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> in a detailed list with sub points in yeah. alphabetical yeah. order. That's great. We'll attach that in the show notes. So Debbie, send us that, please. Definitely. <laughs> So, so, so it's, it's an ongoing process mm -hmm. of saying, you, you know, we're all being changed from glory to glory into his image. It's an ongoing process until I have that privileged moment where I get to look Jesus in the face. I get to see his eyes, glowing eyes looking at me and feeling the love, the value, the care that has always been there for me. Yeah. But it's my recognizing that this road of healing, is, it will last me my lifetime, and I'm still going to continue in the process of, of being changed into his image. And I tell people, I don't want to flatline in my spiritual growth until my body flatlines. 